Tonight on the update, Ghana, India hold talks, foreign ministry delegation holds bilateral talks in India. GH Book Fair launched, authors urged to promote culture and heritage in books. Cocoa farmers to get slashes, Cocoa Bud moves to end labor-intensive farming. 2,497 BECE results withheld, WAIC cancels 173 BECE candidates' results. 1,000 registered on NHIS for free, Brian Champon registers residents of Kwewu on NHIS. Ghana Navy at 60, soldiers' wives undergo skills training. Virgil van Dijk lands UEFA Player of the Year, defender beats C. Ronaldo and Lionel Messi for category. Good evening, it's Friday the 30th of August 2019 and you are tuned into your preferred daily news update program on TV. This is The Update and my name is Kofi Esiedu Berima. Now let's delve into the stories. An eight-member delegation from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration has held bilateral talks in India. The delegation has also, together with the Ghana High Commission in India, participated in a foreign office political consultation with the Ministry of External Affairs and Ministries Department and Agencies MMDAs of India. The deliberations were held in New Delhi on Wednesday, August 28, 2019. The talks centered on trade, investment and commerce, capacity building programs, international cooperation amongst others. They were held with a view to further strengthening the existing close bonds of friendship and cooperation between Ghana and India. They were also held in an effort to further areas of possible cooperation between both nations. Bilateral trade between Ghana and India has appreciated over $3 billion and is expected to increase to $4 billion by 2020. Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Charles Oredu led the delegation. The India team was led by the Minister of State, Secretary Sri Tirumoti. He also thanked the Indian government for the various long-duration scholarship it continues to give to Ghanaian students. Mr. Redu further commended the government of India for its support towards the construction of the Foreign Service Institute. And now the 17th edition of the Ghana International Book Fair has been launched at La Trade Fair in Accra. This year's fair is under the theme Reaching the World Market Through Effective Book Distribution Networks. It is expected to end on Sunday, September 1st, 2019. The Minister of Tourism, Barbara Ting JC, in a speech read on her behalf at the opening ceremony, said the documentation of Ghana's history and culture, which is a primary function of publishing, was critical to the future of the country. Once again, I thank the president of the Ghana Book Publishing Association, the fair director, and the entire organizers of this fair for the wonderful work they are doing to promote book development and literacy in our schools and Ghana as a whole. I wish you all a successful 17th Ghana International Book Fair, and I have the singular honor and privilege to declare the, the 17th edition of the Ghana International Book Fair duly opened. President of the Ghana International Book Fair, Elliot Ejari, stated that the book fair first started in 1995 as a biannual event and over the last five years has become an annual one. He urged that book fairs should remind all and sundry that their history and tradition have always celebrated the argumentative Ghanaian and not the intolerant Ghanaian. According to him, the Ghana International Book Fair has played a twin role of being a cultural as well as a business hub for both national and international publishers interested in doing business in the region. In agriculture, the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Cocoa Board, Cocoa Board, Joseph Bohin Edu, has indicated that the decision by Cocoa Board to import and distribute motorized slashes to cocoa farmers in the country was aimed at alleviating the labor-intensive aspect of cocoa farming. He made this known in an interaction with chiefs and the people of Pramkese in the Kwaibibrim district of the Eastern region. He is on a three-day tour of cocoa-producing communities in the region where he will address several cocoa farmer rallies. 
According to him, it was the policy of the current management to introduce interventions to ease hardships faced by farmers, one of which is weeding. The move towards the use of motorized slashes, he stated, would phase out the labor-intensive use of machetes and holes for weeding. It is also in keeping with the overarching aim to adopt simple user-friendly technologies to ease the work of cocoa farmers and make cocoa farming attractive to the youth, he observed. The introduction and application of modern farming methods and tools are several years overdue, the Cocoa Board boss acknowledged. According to Mr. Edu, Cocoa Board has concluded plans to purchase the motorized slashers they are expected in the country within the first quarter of the 2019-2020 cocoa season. In education, the West African Examination Council, WAEC, has cancelled the results of 173 Basic Education Certificate Examination BC candidates for alleged examination malpractices. An additional 2,497 subject results have been withheld pending the conclusion of investigations into an alleged examination malpractice. WAEC made this known in a statement dated August 29, 2019. The statement, signed by Agnes Teikujo, announced the release of the results for the 2019 BEC. It said a total of 517,331 candidates made up of 263,602 males and 253,729 females sat for the examination. This figure is 1.4% higher than that of the previous year, according to the statement. <music> Meanwhile, the Brian Champon Foundation, BAF, has enrolled over 1,000 residents of Kwewu onto the National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS, free of charge. The registration and renewal exercise was organized for individuals from about five electoral areas within the Kwewu East District of the Eastern Region. Since its inception, the foundation has undertaken numerous interventions that promote the health of the people within its catchment area while also increasing access to quality health service. Speaking at the registration exercise, Hilary Konedu Ewa, the manager of health and sports at the Brian Champong Foundation BAF, emphasized the importance of access to quality health care. He praised the collaborative manner with which the officials of Empire So National Health Insurance Authority teamed up with the foundation to register the residents. And now to more stories, as part of its 60th anniversary celebrations, the Ghana Navy has organized a skills training program for 392 spouses of personnel of the Ghana Armed Forces in Accra. The five-week program was attended by 144 spouses of personnel from the Army, 180 from the Navy and 50 from the Air Force. Also in attendance were 11 serving personnel and a civilian. The training was to equip the women with business skills to start up their own businesses. At its closing ceremony held at Burma Camp in Accra, the Chief of Naval Staff Rear Admiral Seth Amwama said skills training is important because it improves practical knowledge and widens entrepreneurial opportunities. The life of an armed forces spouse is undeniably challenging, which may include staying away from one spouse for months and in some cases years, assuming the role of a single parent and trying to balance it with one's own career and sometimes moving from one region to another another due to transfers, he said. The women were trained in soap making, ice cream, beads production, floor arrangement and decoration amongst others. There was an exhibition of product by the women at the end of the training, each of them receiving a certificate. UEFA Men's Player of the Year is Virgil van Dijk. <laughs> now on to some sports, Virgil van Dijk has been named the UEFA Men's Player of the Year for 2018-2019 with competition from Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo.
the Liverpool defender was crowned at the ceremony for the Champions League group stage draw on Thursday. Barcelona star Messi beat rival Ronaldo and Liverpool's Sadio Mane to the forward award after scoring 12 goals in 10 Champions League appearances for the Catalan Giants last season. The first award of the evening went to Manchester United's legend Eric Cantona who collected the President's Award from UEFA President Alexander Seferin to honour his illustrious playing career and charity work. Liverpool also scooped two of the four positional awards with Van Dijk named best defender ahead of teammate Terence Alexander-Arnold. First of all, I think I need to thank all my teammates. Um, without all of them and without the staff, obviously I wouldn't achieve what I've achieved over the last year, especially. Um, thank my family, of course. But yeah, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a long road, um, but it's part of my, my journey, it's, it's part of you know, who I am. I needed it like this. I'm not a player who was you know, 18 years old and, and, and had that rise straight away. I had to work hard for every step of the way and that, that's part of me and, and I'm very happy about that. And, and yeah, well, I say, I'm very proud to, uh, yeah, to get this trophy and uh, it's all credit to everyone that's you know, helped me along the way. Thank you for staying with us on the update. Remember to take time out to unwind this weekend and join us again at 12.30 and 6.30 p.m. every weekday for your daily news update. You can equally keep updated on happenings on our website, dailyguidenetwork.com. The update is brought to you by Diamond Cement and powered by Press Express. My name is Kofi Esiedu Enjoy your evening and your weekend.